In this tutorial, we are going to evaluate the integral of f dot dr along the curve C, where f is uh, the vector field xi plus yj from uh, minus 1, 0 to the point 1, 0, where C is uh, the semicircle in the first and uh, second quadrant. So I'll start by drawing the semicircle in the first and second quadrant from the point minus 1, 0 to the point 1, 0. So I have my x-axis and then uh, my y-axis there and uh, the point minus 1, then the origin and then the 1 there and we put a 1 on top there and we have the semicircle. It's from the point minus 1, 0 to the point 1, 0 and to we'll call that uh, our curve uh, C. And the radius of uh, uh, the semicircle is a 1 and uh, the equation of uh, a circle centered at the origin, we know it's x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So for this uh, semicircle, it will be x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. And for our integral, on the integral of f dot dr along the curve C, our vector field uh, f is xi plus yj, and then the vector dr there is dxi plus dyj. So def the integral along the curve C of xi plus yj dot dxi plus dyj. And when you are taking the dot product, we multiply the corresponding elements there and we get uh, the integral along the curve C of x and dx plus y and dy. Now looking at uh, that curve C, it has a term which has uh, x squared plus y squared. And uh, when we have uh, such terms, it is convenient to use uh, polar coordinates. So when you are using polar coordinates, we said our R there. When you compare with uh, that equation, we had said that our radius is a 1. And uh, x will be R cosine theta. And we substitute for the value of uh, R, which is 1. We have x is equals to cosine theta. Y is equals to R sine theta. And we substitute for the value of R, we say it is a 1. So we have Y is equals to sine theta. We differentiate X with respect to theta. And we get the derivative of X with respect to theta is equals to minus sine theta. We differentiate Y with respect to theta. And we get the derivative of Y with respect to theta is equals to cosine theta. So from uh, those derivatives, we can uh, get our dx and you obtain it as dx is equal to minus sine theta d theta. And then from the derivative of y, we get that dy is equal to cosine theta d theta. And if you recall, when we are measuring theta, we measure it from the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction. So we have in starting from zero there and going in the counterclockwise direction, along we get uh, to pi there. So looking at the point uh, minus one zero there, we see that uh, our theta will be equal to pi. And uh, at the point uh, one zero where we are ending, we have uh, theta is equals to zero. So we are having theta is between zero and pi, but we are starting at uh, the point where it is uh, pi there and ending where it is uh, zero. So when we are integrating from uh, the point minus 1, 0 to the point 1, 0, theta will be varying from pi to 0. So our limits of integration are pi to 0. Now looking at that information where with the x, the x, the y, the dy, and the limits for theta, we can substitute that into our line integral. And when we substitute those, what we get is the integral from pi to 0 of uh, cosine theta, which is our x, multiplied by minus sine theta d theta, which is our dx, plus sine theta, which is our y, multiplied by cosine theta d theta, which is our dy. We can simplify that to the integral from pi to 0 of minus cosine theta sine theta d theta plus cosine theta sine theta and d theta. So we have uh, that integral now. 
but minus cosine theta sine theta d theta plus cosine theta sine theta d theta it gives us a zero so in that case what we are having is uh, on the integral of f dot dr along the curve c is uh, a zero 